we're, we're going to talk about the message here, uh, this prayer part of the gathering. And the, the power verse there says, when they had prayed, the place where they gathered together was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak the word of God with boldness. And this is not typically how I do a message, but I think today, I think I want to read these scriptures because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Amen? So I would like to read these, these are little parts of scriptures. You can go back and read them in context. Mark eleven seventeen. 17, it says, He began to teach them, saying, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations? Acts 2 42, they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Acts 4.31, we just read that. Acts 13.2, while they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul to the work for which I have called them. And we know that ministering to the Lord, that that was a kind of a... Uh, a prayer setting, you know, a conversation, speaking to the Lord and hearing from the Lord. Acts 16, 6, it happened that as we were going to the place of prayer, so they had this time where they went to do what? Pray. Acts 16, 25, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. 1 Timothy 2, 8, Therefore, I want the men in every place to pray, lifting up holy hands without wrath and dissension. Why do you think it says, I want men? Because the women do it without being told. <laughs> Second Timothy 1 Timothy 1.6, for this reason I remind you to... Kindle afresh the gift of God which is on you through the laying on of hands. And we know the laying on of hands is a, a point of touch in prayer. Do not neglect the spiritual gift you receive through prophecy spoken over you when the elders of the church laid their hands on you. And they brought before the apostles and after praying, they laid their hands on them. And they began laying their hands on them and they were receiving the Holy Spirit. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they began speaking with tongues and prophesying. And then Hebrews 10, therefore, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus. And that last one's in there because uh, we are supposed to boldly go to the throne and ask the Father for what we want. Now, these are not all the scriptures about prayer in the New Testament. There are many, 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 many places about that. This is about prayer in the gathering. And when they were praying in the gathering, what were they praying for? They were praying for the kingdom to be advanced. Remember the two things we talked about that the gathering does? It builds up the body and it advances the kingdom. But if you read these scriptures, there's not a whole lot of, oh, help us. There's not a lot of, we're in trouble here. They're mad at us, protect us. In fact, the power verse is wrapped around the story of what? They had just gotten in trouble and they said, you guys better go shut up or you're gonna be in big trouble. And we're gonna bring the hammer down. And what did they do? They went and prayed. They were filled with boldness. And what did they do? They began to speak the word of God with boldness. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak the word with, and they were gonna get themselves in what? More trouble. It wasn't about staying out of trouble, was it? It wasn't like laying low and staying under the radar. They, when they prayed, they got filled with the Holy Spirit and things happened. When they prayed, the Holy Spirit spoke to them and people were sent out. When they prayed, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they had prophetic words spoken in tongues and in English. I mean, so when we pray, what should we be praying for? 
boldness and for the kingdom to be expanded. And not for us to go, oh, you know, our culture is really bad. Sometimes I think, you know, we, we, we're more focused on wanting the culture to look like our culture so it's more comfortable for us. And I, I understand that and I totally agree with that. I have 13 children. And I don't want to go into some place where I go, oh, we, this is not the way we do things. And then I got to explain. Sometimes you can't even explain to little kids why it's not right. Because they haven't even got there yet. So I totally get it. We all want things nice and appropriate, right? And we want culture to kind of fit our lifestyle so it's just easy. But I'm telling you, if you went where Jim goes, I have the hardest time not calling you Jimmy. If you went where Jim goes, and you saw that how at odds Christianity is with culture because you can't even talk about it, we're a lot better off. And we should not be thinking about how can it be soft, how can it be comfortable, how can it be convenient. We should be praying for boldness that we can reach the next generations. And it's not convenient, and it's not easy. And culture is going way off in another direction from where we wanted to go. But the way culture is changed is when many, many people come into the kingdom. And then the culture changes because their behavior changes. And they quit wanting to live that way. And then everybody goes, wow, yes, this is a good place to be. So we really... You know, when we're praying in here on Sunday mornings, there's, there's a, uh, at 9.30, there's kind of an infectious thing. People just all of a sudden started praying for the mission trip to India. And, and that's a good thing. But then we started, there's also a lot of prayer going on for the life-giving churches that are in Delaware County that we want them to all be filled up too. This is not about us, it's about the kingdom. And, you know, we're praying for the Holy Spirit to move in here and for your lives to be touched and transformed. And I believe people's lives were transformed today. I believe what the Holy Spirit spoke to me to share with you during communion, that some people in here made transitional moments. Some of you, when Jim was talking, you know, said, hey, maybe I can reach my neighbor. I mean, if he can go to Jordan and talk to people that are totally outside our culture, maybe I can talk to my neighbor. Maybe I can talk to some of these younger kids in the generation behind me. You know, so all the things that are going on today are inspirational and bringing transformational moments into our lives. I think the greatest tragedy is when we get comfortable and our prayers are all about, you know, and first of all, I want everybody healthy. I want everybody well off financially. I want everybody to be blessed in abundance. And I believe that's God's plan for us. But... If that's what you seek, you may not get it. If that's what you're in pursuit of all the time. Now, if you're pursuing the kingdom, I think blessings will chase you down all over the place. But if you're pursuing your comfort, and that's how you measure your relationship with God, you've got a false measuring stick. I don't think anywhere in the Bible it says, I have come bring you a Cadillac. And everything in your life goes right every day. I think he says something more like, in this world you will have problems. Take heart, I have overcome the world. So we've got to get our, you know, our measuring stick readjusted and our focus readjusted and our, and our prayer target readjusted and let's start praying for the kingdom and let's start praying for the Holy Spirit to fill us with boldness and let's expect him to do it and then let's act on that. Let's go out and change some things through his power, his, him speaking through us. 
And, and remember, these were just, they were just us. There's no difference between who they were and who we are. The same kind of mix of people. All different backgrounds and education levels and cultures and, you know, and, you know, some of us have had hard lives. Some of us had medium lives. Some of us had easy lives. Every, you know, there's every blend in here right now, right? Some of us are in easy spots now. Some of us are just struggling to get through the next day. And, but we can all be filled with the Holy Spirit and we can all do what he's called us to do. Amen? It doesn't matter who you are. God's no respecter of persons. His Holy Spirit will come in and fill you and boom, miracles will happen. And, I, and you know, when I prayed for, for James that the, Holy, the power of the Holy Spirit be in his life, when he goes out in the mission field and he prays for somebody and they get healed, that's what happened in the New Testament, right? And that's how the gospel gets a great strong footing. And it, it can take off, you know, hundreds can be saved through one person um, being healed and being touched by God. So I just encourage you, Keep praying for people. It's not about, God can take care of himself. If you pray and they're not healed, that's between God and them. You're just doing what God told you to do. But if you don't pray for them, there's no chance, right? So we've got to be in there and doing that and, and putting, putting our best selves forward uh, as empowered by the Holy Spirit. Let's stand together. And we're going to pray we're going to pray this prayer right now. We're going to pray uh, for the kingdom to, to happen. We're going to pray for the Holy Spirit to fall. We're going to pray for more boldness and, uh, and for fear to be destroyed in our lives, that fear would have no power over us. So when the Holy Spirit says something like he did to Drew, that we just do it. And when this guy that he talked to he was like, okay, and he did it. And we've got, to, we've got to have that same kind of, yes, Lord, send me attitude. Father, we come before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And there's a really powerful presence of your Holy Spirit here today. And there's a, there's a profound truth that is being revealed. And that is when we pray, we gotta pray for the kingdom. We got to pray for your kingdom to happen, for your will to be done, not ours. And, and so we humble ourselves. We, we submit to you. Father, we ask that you would just send your Holy Spirit once again, refill us, refresh us, cause that uplift to come up underneath of us and cause us to rise up with wings like eagles. Cause us to run and not be weary. Cause us to walk and not be tired. Father, for those who have been pushing and pressing and fighting for a long time, we pray for that uplift to come and lift them up right now in the name of Jesus. But we don't pray for uplift for things to be easy for us. We pray for uplift that your kingdom will go forth. Your name will be shouted from the housetops. Your name will close out prayers for people that are hurting. Your name will break the chains that hold people back. We pray that we would not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because we know it's the power of salvation for all who believe. Father, make that so real to us right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. And God's people in agreement said, Amen. Amen.